Okay, another scam that these idiots are going on with. So as you can see, I've just loaded this one up to Facebook. Um, now, my Facebook doesn't have any friends or followers. So if you're on a Facebook of mine that has friends and followers, it's not mine. Um, oh, actually, shivers. Sorry, I actually tell a lie. There is one friend on my Facebook. Um, I normally don't let anybody on my social media accounts. Um, but this person's okay because I actually did a function with her in, oh, it's not really okay because you're going to see some personal information. All right, it was um, Corinne. All right, Corinne, I did a function with back in late 2008, early 2009, the jury launch. Anyway, um, oh, well, I don't care. I, I, I'm sick of this. So they've got the, these idiots of people. They, they think that I'm uh, from a farm or something like this. No, we had horse studs. So I did grow up, grow up competing in a sport for equestrian riding. I didn't grow up riding horses every day. I have a life. We have a life. It's a, that would be like saying, like my grandfather grew up. My grandfather's from the city and he had racing horses. That would be like saying, oh, he must have grown up on a farm with riding horses every day. No, my grandfather's from Balmain and he owned race horses. We, okay, my fair, I'm from the suburbs, but I lived my life in the city. My mother moved. We had horses in the, in the suburbs. This information must have come from people that, Obviously, only knew my mother after she moved from Sydney, so he must have known her and her second husband. I'm sick of it. I'll tell you what, if I find out it comes from that idiot, um, Nicolette Jones that moved to Picton, oh my fucking god, if it did, Nicolette Jones, let me spell it out for you, you fucking idiot. And I'm gonna call you this because you people are fucking idiots. I have a gut full of these horse riding people that want to say they know someone, but they don't. It's like, no, you know me from pulling up in a horse truck, um, unloading horses for a horse show at a... Well, I wonder if Nicolette Jones knows me from Sydney Royal. I don't think I saw it at Sydney Royal. I don't know. Anyway, Sydney Royal, Brisbane Royal, Sydney Pony National, um, other horse shows that I was at. You know me from going into a hat class, from riding competitions. That's how you know me. So briefly walking past in the marching lard saying hello we don't know each other outside of that we never socialized you don't these people don't know me i never socialized outside of that that was my sport that's my sport did my sport went home i had a life i was involved in actually well, one just logged into my facebook it's easy to pull it up there because i keep all my photos online so the facebook i have is no friends and followers but there's one person on it which i Shouldn't have had on there, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't keep friends or followers on social media because if anybody wants to know anything about me, you come to me and you ask me, and I'll tell you, yes, I grew up riding horses in equestrian riding, but I also played soccer. I was also involved in modeling, theater, music, um, like, you know, uh, musicals, sorry. Um, what else was involved? Oh, my God. Um, after school activities, yeah, window dressing, uh, Downtown interiors, um, interior decoration, interior design, um, art. Did I mention that? Um, commerce. Um, and I, so Mr. Tryon was my commerce teacher, so I was involved in business stuff. Yeah, I had a life. I didn't just have horses. Uh, that's a sport. So these people think that my life must have been land. So they're like, oh, when I move into America, oh, well, okay, we have to, to find an environment that would suit him. So it has to be land or he likes nature. It's like, why would I like nature? I've lived my life in the city. I was still competing at horse shows in 2004 and I'm living in the city. Just because I compete in a sport of equestrian riding doesn't mean I know anything about nature at all. You fuck. And I'll tell you the biggest one who actually made these stories up, Stephanie DeSales. Stephanie DeSales is another deadbeat loser that knows nothing about me. I'm going to say a lot of people in Sydney, I've really had to step... People, Stand back from it. A lot of people have actually said to me, oh, you've distanced yourself from people. I said, I've distanced myself from everybody that's had wrong information. I can't believe this. In 23 years, I'm looking at these people going, wait a minute. We classified each other as friends and you don't know the fact that my grandparents are from the inner city. Like I spent right up until 1999 going to Piper Street, Leichhardt, to Nan's house. Or that I'm actually from, Dun like born and raised Dunsmore Street, um, Rudy Hill. That's where we had the horse done. I uh, went to St. Aidan's in ethnic school. I only went to when mum moved to Tamworth because well, her second husband wanted to move there. I said, again, we knew nobody. No one heard of, nobody heard of Tamworth before 1989. 
This is a joke. I'm fed up with it. You can see how I'm fed up with it because I'm angry. I'm angry all the time. I'm unhappy and I'm pissed off for eight years. And that's not going to change until the matter goes publicly. This is an international thing. This went on in America. I don't know. what Did someone make up a story about, oh, when I went to America after making an entry, why I'm not going around seeing New York? Is this some other bullshit? Because let me tell you, and I'm just, let's pin everything else and go back to it. I want to talk about this for a sec. When I had to make an entry, so after my interview was in August 2014, and they told me you've got to make an entry before the end of the year, and I thought, oh, it is the end of the year. I thought, okay, um, I'll leave it right up to the end of December, and that way it gives me an excuse to not see my family for Christmas, because I hate seeing my family. Um, I love Christmas, love Christmas so much. It's my favourite time of the year, um, as long as I'm not with my family. Uh, and I don't mean dad's side, sorry, because Arnie Linda, I love spending Christmas with you and you know that. I love you, sweetheart. I mean, as much as I'm pissed off for the last eight years and I am angry, I guess they don't understand why. And I guess I wanted more from my dad's sister and my dad's brother-in-law, my Uncle Tony, than what they could give me. Meaning I wanted more support when I was getting lied about. And, and they didn't give it to, to me, but then they didn't know what was going on. So I guess my upset with Uncle Tony and Arnie Linda, which I was, I'm not. Now, I might still be annoyed with certain things that went on, but I'm, I'm not. My upsetness with them was only because, and we've, all, we've been close for years, uh, it was only because they just didn't know what was going on. I guess they didn't really have much information, and there was a period of time when I never had it, we never had anything to do with them because, well, Dad never did. There's a divide in the family. And then I got older, and, um, well, Nan's funeral. Ruby's, I always saw Ruby, even after she remarried. Like My grandfather passed away when I was... Ooh, six or seven, um, Stanley passed away, and um, then my nan re uh, remarried. No, no kids from a second marriage, where she remarry, and I still went and saw her and her um, uh, second husband as well at the, the house that my grandfather brought for my nan, which was um, at Earth Long Beach. Anyway, that's I'm going off the point here, but I would still go and see nan, and then when nan passed away, um, they were, they knew that I would go and see nan. And when Nan was in hospital in Gosford Hospital, the phone call, I don't think it was, it wasn't Dad, because Dad was away somewhere. I don't think Dad could make it for Nan when she was dying. I think it was Meredith. I hadn't seen him for years. So this is where, and I still remember this, it's like, well, that was really nice of them, because they knew that I'd been going and seeing Nan. And my cousins, who I, I had not seen since I was a little kid. So my cousins, Meredith and Joe and all that, I didn't see them since I was a little kid. We only just passed through, there's a funeral, like Arnie Sanders' funeral. Um, and I thought, wow, this is, they, they rang me to say, um, Justin Nan's passing away. We're up here at Gosford Hospital. And I went up to Gosford Hospital, which passed away in October, 2007. Um, and yeah, that looked, that meant a lot to me because they obviously knew they, they would go to the house and they go, oh, Justin's been here. Like Nan must have said, oh, Justin, when he was up visiting his dad, cause I used to go and see dad at Empire Bay, then leave dad's and go to Nan's and sit and have like lunch with Nan. I, which is, oh my God, this is heartbreaking to me. I left Nan's dinner set in America. Um, and that dinner set came over from the UK. So it was Nan's father's mother's dinner set, from memory, Uncle George told me. Um, and Auntie Linda gave it to me and I left it in America. I couldn't bring it back here. And I used to have hot lunch with Nan on that dinner set and nan used to have so my this is the thing everyone's listening to my mother opening her mouth shut up seriously you people keep listening to mother my mother i have two grandmothers one's lola may purdy the other one's it will that's you know purdy's her married name but um yeah uh, the other one's my mum's uh, that's my mum's mum the other one's my dad's mum ruby jean hill um, sorry, Ruby Jean Hill is her maiden name. Uh, Ruby Jean Fleming is her married name. So, yeah, I'm trying to go through the history because there's a reason being when I was trying to explain to people on how I'm connected to sort of nationality. So the Hill side, which was, this is what I was bringing up. So Ruby Jean Hill married Stanley Fleming, became Ruby Fleming anyway. Um, on the Hill side, um, Frank Edward Hill's mother, I think it was, um, she's from uh, Southampton in the UK and his father is from London and that's why I'm bringing up the hills so that side um, <clears throat> Nan's mother is Ada Gray so Ruby's mother's Ada Gray and her father's Frank Edward Hill so it was Frank Edward Hill's parents that brought that dinner set over from the UK 
Um, they went from the UK to Dunedin, New Zealand, Dunedin, New Zealand to Wallara in Sydney. Um, from Wallara in Sydney to um, Abbotsford in Sydney, from Abbotsford in Sydney to Parramatta in Sydney, from Parramatta to Sydney to uh, it's along beach to Central Coast. Then I got the dinner set from the Central Coast. Aunt Linda gave it to me then, and it's been with me since until I brought it to America and so forth. I would sit and have hot lunch with my nan, and there will be glass jars for all the condiments. Um, there will be like proper, it was all proper set out. It was proper dining for lunch with proper silverware, cutlery, jugs, milk jugs, bowls, plates, you name it. Like, Everything was on the dining table, sitting there at Edelong Beach with Nan and having a hot lunch with my Nan is one of the best memories I have of my dad's mother sitting there, even with her second husband. So her second husband will be there. And it was all teapots and china and beautiful chinaware and beautiful tables and tablecloths and napkins and just really fancy. It was, it was, it was beautiful. It was very different to mum's well no mum's anyway it, it was different it was beautiful so you're sitting with Nan and like they would always get out a tablecloth and there was this and that and it was wasn't just it was a whole art form to sitting down having lunch it was beautiful so I used to have a hot lunch with Nan so um I guess but then when dad's sisters who I didn't really keep in touch with until after them passed away um when they and I knew them when I was younger um when they would go up to the central coast from Sydney to visit their mother they would know that Justin's been, I guess Nan Ruby must have said, oh, Justin's been in Mark's son. Um, so I am the last Fleming. I brought this up. And by the way, I am the last Fleming male. There is no other Fleming male outside of me. There was Stanley Fleming, there's Mark Ian Fleming, and there's Justin Mark Fleming. That's it. I'm the third male, and that's it. It ends with me. There's no other Fleming male of my line. That's it. So what I said there was true as well. I'm the last one. Um, anyway, I love the Flemings. The Flemings are beautiful people. Very relaxed people to be around. But I'm someone who doesn't like, you know, I'm getting off the, the point of the subject here. Um, I don't, um, yeah. Um, I didn't grow up riding horses every day. <laughs> Let's just get back to that because I've put, I've put a pin in this. I've gone off at a tangent and talked about things. Um, but, you know, I, um, this whole thing, we had other lives. Like, we had a horse start in Sydney. My dad played baseball. My dad's a baseball player. My dad, you know, mum worked as a paralegal. We we weren't this, we're not farming. We're not, I have no idea about nature. Our summers were spent at the beach. Like, that's where our summer was. This whole ridiculous crap that has been carried on since Carol moved with her second husband in April 1909. People look at me like I must know something to do with gardening or something. I'm like, I have no idea. I, you know, there's certain plants that I like and think, oh, wow, they look nice inside, but... You know, yeah, I have no idea. I don't know a thing about nature. Not a thing. And I don't really want to. I don't care. I've not grown up on the land. I've spent most of my life living, living in apartments. I can't stand being outside the city, not even where I'm living at the moment, because I want to be out. I want to, you know, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, oh, I can't sleep. I'm going to get up and go get a hot chocolate. Because that's what I used to do in Sydney. It's like, oh, God, I've woken up. I'm to work on some artwork. You know what? I'm going to go walk up to Hernandez Cafe and get a hot chocolate. I've always lived in the city for like my, like most of my life now. I, I don't like where I hate it. I hate the fact that I've been forced into an environment that people think is something that I like. But I, I want to know who told him this. Now, is Carol making up stories that I liked being a waiter and working in a restaurant again? Because I didn't. I, I, I can Let me... Actually, I'm just going to... Put it out there. Um, can people stop listening to my mother, Carol? She's a liar. She must tell people. Okay, I bet you she tells people. Oh, Justin, he was one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat. The, I know exactly what Carol tells people. Oh, he loved camping growing up. Oh, he was always out the back. Oh, he was always down the river going camping, putting up tents, taking people down there on his motorbike, and they had the best time. Did she tell that story? Because I know that's exactly how she tells it. Can I? actually tell you exactly what happened um carol so no i hate camping that's not what happened at all we lived in a normal suburban life like in sydney in dunsmore street that had a great entertainment area i had a two-story cubby house that was more like a teenager's retreat this is before we moved 
Okay, so before April 1989, landscape gardens, swimming pool, there was no grass, no camping, no nothing. So if I had friends over, we would spend time in the, in the entertainment room playing pool, which is my dad's pool table. Um, there's the, there was a small little family room out the back of the house. So they'll play video games. So, and because I had the, um, was it the, the, was it the, the, the Commodore? So there was the Commodore computer, something like this. Um, can't think, it was like the, so 80s. I think it was the Commodore computer we had out the back in that room. I used to play video games, um, you know, swim in the swimming pool, play, you know, play on the pool table. That's what I used to do. So I actually had proper normal suburban birthday parties. Then mum moved in April 1989 and wanted to turn me into the people that she lived around. I wasn't going to have a bar of soap of it. So when I wanted my birthday party, mum said, you're not having it inside. She's moved and brought all this land. It's like, what's that got to do with me? So she was like, these are her exact words were, if you want a birthday party, I'm not cleaning up after it. You can have it down the river so you can put a tent up and have a birthday party in there. That's the truth. There was none of this, oh, he used to love doing... No, she's a liar. She's a fucking liar. And you people, you lap it up. You lap up Carol's lies and bullshit. No, that's true. The other thing I bet she tells... I bet she still shows the photos of when I worked at a, in a cafe. Yeah. Um, oh, he was so happy back then. Oh, he's lost his self-esteem. No, I haven't. Carol's a liar. Carol's manipulating you. Carol is a scammer. I know these lies. I've heard them before. She just gets hold of a new group of people that will listen to her bullshit. And she gets she gets a new group of people. And let me check on Baxter's. I've got some... Um, <laughs> I've got hash browns in the oven for my dog. Let me check on him before he falls asleep. <laughs> Does he want, yeah, my dog's sport. He wanted hash browns. They're almost ready. Um... <laughs> Yeah. And um, there you go, cutie. I, I'd spoil my dog because I love him. And yeah, oh, by the way, I had asked a question yesterday as well. I'm going to circle back around to what I was saying about growing up with English Bull Terriers. Yeah, I did. So, anyway, I'm not having that discussion anymore because I did. Um, well, mixed breed English Bull Terriers and so forth. So, I know the breed well. Um, my auntie Marianne's dog was a mixed breed. English, had English Bull Terrier in it, had other staffies and so forth. But this is ridiculous. I know the breed. Like, knock this off. In the last fucking eight years, I've had a gut of you idiots walking up to me and th thinking that whatever information you've been fed that's false and you think you've got a right to come up, these little um, fucking dog organisations. Mate, I, I walk away and I bite my tongue going, you know what, if this was a different world, Go back to the eighties. You would get your mat. You would get your mouth smacked in for walking up to a bloke and start talking about their dog and giving him lectures like these assholes lectured me. Hey, you would have got your head smacked in in the eighties in Sydney doing that. Seriously, you would have. Even in the nineties, these people really are entitled that they think they're entitled enough to interfere in my life. Now, I'm telling you, I want to see you guys get arrested. I'm telling you, I'm going to sue your ass for sale. That's what it's cost me. Yeah, well. So let's go back to it. Um, so, and yeah, I did grow up with dogs. Oh, we grew up with dogs inside. Christ, Dad used to put his German Shepherd inside. That German Shepherd of Dad's heifer was the biggest, the biggest bloody sook of a dog. I loved heifer. Um, heifer used to sleep inside, live inside, right up until Dad got with his um, partner who had a daughter with, Debbie. I don't think Debbie and Debbie's daughters liked heifer inside. Um, but heifer, when I was growing up, heifer was always inside. Um, when Dad lived in Penrith with his partner, Annette, because um, Annette's from Penrith. Um, Heifer was inside. <laughs> she was always inside, that dog. Loved her. Um, but anyway, English bullies, yeah, I have. There's, so Reg, you probably had an English bully. Dad's mother liked English bullies. There's a photo of Dad. Hang on, let me find it. Uncle Tony sent it to me. Um, talking here. Let me go into my emails. So anyway, while I'm looking at my emails, and find the one from Uncle Tony where he's actually sent me some family photos. Um, put a good time in here. Um, so I was saying about growing up with land and stuff. Yep. Uh, good time, need some pics. That's another one. Family link, let me see. Um, so yeah, no, I didn't. Like, dad did scuba diving as a sport, played baseball as a sport. Um, Damn it, I'm gonna put it under. 
Um, this is really hard trying to type with one hand while I'm holding the phone. Um, you know, we didn't grow up as farming people. I, these, these are bullshit stories. It's ridiculous. And I don't understand, like, is it because of me buying Baxter? Baxter's a city dog. English Bull Terriers were bred for the city. I, I brought a dog that's bred for the city. It's um bad to have, you know, actually, if I sit this here so I can keep filming. I want to stop at half an hour, but let me just see. Uh, there we go. Okay. Still works. All right, I've got to... There we go, it works better. I can use my hands and time. So, um, and I'm gonna upload this with the other um, video as well. Uh, good tiny. Uh, look, sorry for being, or if anyone ever views these videos, chopping around while I'm trying to get things done. But you yeah, look, I've um, like, okay, if I can go back to even my grandparents being off from the city, and they moved to the suburbs. Um, I still spent time in the city growing up as a kid. We, we weren't a farm people. Like, I don't know what Carol's tried to make up um, or anyone else for that matter. Because then there was idiots that tried to say, oh, he's got trauma to, to the country. I'm like, I'm not from the country. Like, I'd lived there for an experience um, for six years during a period of time at the high school because my mother moved to an area that we knew nobody. Uh, what I could have done was said, no, I'm not going, I'll stay in Sydney. We had horses in Sydney. We rode in competitions. Um, people still ride in horse competitions today and they live in the city. People still, if they've got money, uh, have horses in Moore Park. Um, this is ridiculous. So these people from horse shows don't know me. They, I think some people even think I'm blonde because they're talking about Shane Childs. So you've got some people that go, oh, he must die. He's, I remember him, but he was always blonde. Or he was, and then you've got other idiots think they remember me being involved in cannabis and stuff because I, and I had red hair. No, actually, shit. Well, I right. Daniel Rackley had red hair. Let me jump on those. So I actually had do three things here at once. Now close this down. I'm gonna find. So Daniel Rackley had. Daniel Rackley is exactly like his father. Drugs, alcohol, suicide, depression. All the Rackleys are the same. I got dragged into this in the last eight years where people thought it was me and I kept saying that's not me and they tried to argue a point that they thought a photo was Faith Rackley. That photo is Daniel Rackley's daughter. Um, Daniel Rackley's Faith Rackley's other brother. My mother knew this. I told her straight away and she knew it. So she knew that people confused us but she's a manipulator. Um, here it is here. So that's, you can see Daniel Rackley's got reddish brown hair like his dad. That's his daughter. Um, they thought it was me. So people actually thought this was me. It's not I want to read that clear up. It's not really clear. Um, that's not. So then I had people say, and it doesn't, it doesn't look anything like me. So then I actually had idiots go, oh, but he used to be fat. He's just fatter in that photo. I was like, no, I was never fat. Now I'm fat, thanks to what I've just been put through. Um, this one, here we go. This is one. That is Daniel Rackley. That's his daughter. Some idiot said that was Faith Rackley. They thought that was faithful. I wouldn't be surprised if my own insane mother did that because she's always up to some scam. That's Daniel Rackley, Mark Rackley's son. That's my mother's second husband's son. That's his daughter who looks like Faith Rackley. Faith Rackley is Daniel Rackley's sister. The Rackleys all look alike. They have red hair. Um, it's in their DNA. I don't have any red hair DNA in my family. It's either blonde or black. Um, the Rackleys have reddish brown hair. The Rackleys have massive, huge depression and suicide. It runs through their family. Um, drugs, alcohol, cannabis, even harder alcohol than that, uh, harder drugs than that. They have alcoholism. They have issues. I've been tagged into this in the last eight years. It doesn't matter what I say. I've said several times, you know, you're talking about my mother's second husband. I'm not related. I'm not fucking related. I even had a social worker. Let me show you something. I had someone from the acute care centre wanted to talk to me because of this post. See this post here? See, that's um, smash and grab. Um, Daniel Rackley just won something of free spins. Okay, Daniel was doing online gambling. That's his Facebook. Um, that's the Dragons football team that he goes for, just like his father. Uh, these social workers harassed me. They harassed me in 2017 and 2018 over this. And it was like, oh, he's lost all his money on gambling online slots. We've They were stalking Daniel Rackley's social media. 
So the acute care centre at, at St. Vincent's was actually looking at Faith Rackley's brothers. They've been doing this since 2015. They were looking at Faith Rackley, her brother's social media, obviously, because they came at me with information that was plastered all over her brother's social media. I have now lost so much damage because of that in two countries. I can't get it resolved. Honestly, Australia needs a good legal system to go after these mental health workers. They should be in jail. I said back then, you've got wrong information. That's not me. That doesn't even relate to me. That's my mother's second husband and his son who you're talking about. But you know how much is money it's cost me? And these people, they still harass me to date. In the area I'm living, I haven't had one bit of peace for eight years because these assholes won't be told. They want to believe they're right so they don't have to pay damages, but they're wrong. So is New South Wales. New South Wales police even had me linked in with Daniel Rackley and Mark Rackley. I'm like, but I'm not related to them. My mother, are you going to start linking me in with everybody my mother goes out with? So the only way to resolve that, I think, is to divorce my mother. She's the one that caused it. And the two are divorced. My mother separated with Mark Rackley in 1994. I, I barely know them. So why am I getting dragged into this? Anyway, there's that. Oh, there's that one. Hang on, let me look at this. Um, Daniel Rackley's Facebook post from 2015. November, here we go. November 2015, Daniel Rackley writes on his Facebook. Um, he well, this is a post that he shared about a song when he was suicidal. Yeah. You know, the acute care centre, little fucking pieces of shit people do have sent Vincent's harassed me over this and I'm there going, fucking hell, I'm not a Rackley. I'm not related to the Rackleys. I don't give a shit what you've been told. My mother had two husbands. Mark Rackley's got a son. He knows all those nursing deadbeat dickheads in Tamworth. Mark Fleming has a son. I'm Mark Fleming's son. Two different people. You fucking idiots. I've got accused of dyeing my hair black because, no, it has to be him. It looks, he's just got, he, this is what the idiots were saying. I'm like, no, you're looking at Daniel Rackley. You're looking at Daniel Rackley. You're looking at the other idiots that people have me confused with Shane Childs, my mother's nephew. So these fucking losers that go and force information, they don't want to pay for the damage they've caused. I'm paying for it. I'm paying for it in my living home environment. These assholes think that they've got a right to harass me. I'm paying for it in every aspect of my life in two fucking countries. And these assholes get paid to make a mistake like that. That is the biggest negligence I've ever heard of. But here I am saying, yeah, that's not true. You're talking about Daniel Rackley. Did they listen? No. To date, they haven't listened. And I can't get it resolved. Even with this after I was pleased, I said to him several times, I was like, don't have me also known as Rackley. There's no legal document. There's no way I was ever known as Rackley as a last name. Why would I be? I grew up with my dad, Mark Fleming. Mark Rackley is the deadbeat nurse or my mother's second husband. Mark Fleming is the decent human being builder of my mother's first husband, my father. Two different people. Do you reckon that these people corrected it when I told them? Or do you reckon they just mocked me and smirked me and the same thing when I said I've got a green card to America and these nurses didn't listen? And they harassed me for years and then harassed me in America and cost me over 100,000 damages plus assets, belongings, living home environment. Do you think any of this is resolved? No, because Australia really is a deadbeat country. I don't know why people want to move here. These people are fucking deadbeats. And you know where the majority of it comes from? Commonwealth countries. I'm telling you now, we've got too many Commonwealth country workers in Australia. Too many people from the UK. Fuck the bastards. Seriously. They come to Australia like they're king shit. It's like, mate, you are not Australian. You need to remember you're from the UK. You can easily fuck off back there. I, I've never made... And even though, like, my descendants, I've got descendants from the UK, I have no... Whatever was that word? I have hatred for the UK. I won't ever go to the UK. In New York, yes, that's me. In the UK, no thanks. You can have that. So even though I've got descendants that are UK, and no, not criminals, not convicts, they came over here. I'm like, yeah, fuck that. The fucking UK. Mate, I can't stand dealing with the fucking Irish in Sydney. So anyway, go back to social media. What was I just on to? Um, okay, Uncle Tony. So I'm going to show you. I was talking about the English bullies. I oh, know I jump around, but I can easily circle back and, and follow where I was on to. Uncle Tony sent me um, some family photos. No, it's not there. Damn it. Um, and actually, my dad as a kid is holding... 
an English Bull Terrier. Um, where is it? No, it's got to be somewhere here. I've got to save somewhere. No, Uncle Tony's always doing stuff for me, sending me photos and that. Um, just type in Tony. So, yeah, I had, um, here we go, Fem. Oh, shoot, I just lost it. There we go. Send us a link. All right. So, uh, so Uncle Tony sent me all these, um, the family, and I'll just show you quickly. Oh, by the way, there we go. That's my nan's house in Abbotsford that she grew up in. And that is my nan. That's Ruby Jean Hill when she was younger. These are all her siblings. I don't know which one, Uncle George is in there, but anyway, they're all passed on now. Um, but that's, that house hasn't changed much in Abbotsford in Sydney. That's where she grew up, that beautiful old house. Anyway. Um, Dad holding the, because I actually messaged us said, hang on. I said, is that Dad, Uncle Tony on the left? He goes, yeah, I said, that's an English pulley. So that, well, very similar to the English pulley. That's my dad there. That's his brother, Warren. One's got a white, one's got a black. Anyway. Um, Actually, well, I've got these here. I'm going to save them. I, Uncle Tony's going to do me a, a disc with them. Um, God, I've got everything, everything, school photos. Um, here we go. I love this one because the, the big nose. <laughs> Aunty Sandra with the big nose. I'm going to leave it next. It's at Aunty Sandra, big nose. That's uh, Uncle Graham there. Aunty Sandra, Aunty Sharon, be, that would be Uncle Warren, that's Dad, it's Uncle Graham. Yeah, yeah the big nose, there's a lot of big, big hook noses in that side of the family. If she ever show you, oh, here we go, because look at Nan's parents, look at the, <laughs> I can make fun of my, um, it's an endearment, that's Ada Gray, that is my Nana Ruby's mother, and that's Frank Edward Hill. That's um, my nana's father, when they were old. That's um, Frank's 80th, he's about 80 there. Oh, anyway, um, so yeah, so this crap, hang on, this, dad, um, so this crap about, um, you know, my parents leaving their wedding. That's dad, that's mum, my poor father, I don't know why he married off. She had to be the biggest fucking bitch. That's, yeah, that's my parents when they were young. Teenagers, getting married. Um, anyway. Um, so. I'm sorry. So, I'll add this up with the next one. I hope it posts as well. Um, I'm just trying to find before I finish this one off. Um, it's doing my, actually I'll just jump back into Facebook, I'll put them up there. Um, and these are long, these are going to be long video posts, but you know what, this is just going to be on the joke. Um, I'm just going to keep trying to get this resolved legally, um, bypass New South Wales Police and try private prosecution through just talking to a magistrate with what I've just had to um, endure. Um, no life for eight years. It continued for eight years. It's like, seriously, I can tell you what my life was like before the surveillance. After the surveillance, it's like, seriously, fuck off. You know? Um, here we go. All right. So, oh, shit, let me get, okay. Oh, I've got to get the originals out of storage. Amanda and myself competing in all shows. We used to compete in the city shows. Earlier, there's me, but there's me. So, anyway, um, this is bullshit. But look, I'll upload this video, hopefully so upload, and go towards this one. Um, uh, which I've just put up there. So... This one, I've just explained a couple of things here. I mean, mind you, I've just had these deliberately, um, which is what I want to talk to a magistrate about. This is not where you would say, oh, the privacy invasion was just accidental in the city or whatever. No, you're talking about a deliberate monitoring and surveillance for one's own benefit and gain. 
um, to cause trouble in my life, and it has caused trouble. So, in two countries, and they try to force me out of the city. It's like, hang on a minute. I've lived most of my life in a city and I've lived most of my life in apartments. The trouble was caused in 2017 because of Michael Long, some deadbeat loser from Tamworth. That was my neighbour. And some Deb Mears. Uh, Deb Mears lady. These people that harassed me that thought I was somebody else. And I've had to put up with that. Anyway, I'm going to upload this with that video. Hopefully they'll pair together. And um, look, I'm just going to keep going all week. And the only way to resolve this is as a criminal matter. I need a magistrate to hear it. Um, oh, and I need a magistrate to correct any wrong information that was said in Picton Court in 2017. I'll apologise for that. But being stalked and harassed like I was, what do you expect?